Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Loveline, coast to coast. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. It's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. I, uh. No? I would like, uh. Well, as you know, I like to talk about driving and parking and uh, gas stations and all things that have to do with uh, the automobile in this fair city of ours. I would like, as and I, as I was screaming about uh, last week, I want us to sort of take our streets back right. from the uh, a-hole foreigners who seem to have taken over every facet of automotive, whether it be the guy who drives the tow truck. Who won't listen to you? To the uh, guy at the uh, 76 station? To, no, not all right. To the parking lot guy. Um, there's a couple of things. It's not a couple that things. Foreigners. Get it's a, it's a, yeah, they, they are. They are in customer service, and they are uh, not exactly at your service. That's right. No, no, no. I don't want to sound like a xenophobe yeah. here. It does, foreigners aren't aren't bad folks, but they're uh, they're sort of literalist. You tell them nobody gets in after this hour. You have to round up, or you can't do this. And they stick to the plan. Mm. They don't want to get fired, and they don't. They don't. They don't, they don't have to worry about the nuance of good life. employees. Maybe yeah, not really. No, because maybe, maybe they can't assess the cultural. Most balance. of them are assholes. Yeah. I mean, most of the guys at like seventy six station and those guys, they're 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 yeah. they're angry men. Let's stay away. No, from, not the right. Let's stay away right. from that tonight. All right. Well, listen, I what I, I don't know what to say. Uh, yeah, if, yeah, you do. That's the problem. I, I, I keep going. Keep going. No, listen to me. No, no, don't go to the gas station thing. Right. I'm getting away from the yeah, gas yeah. station. Okay. All right, but here's what I'm saying. Yeah. If if 100% of the guys are angry foreigners, what am I supposed to call them? Angry foreigners. Okay, thank but, you. But I was just pointing out it was not that they were foreigners. It was that they were people who were... Uh, I don't know how much it weighs into the whole equation. When, wouldn't I, you bet? I don't want to go Here's what I can that. say. Here's yeah. what I can say. I can say white people can be mean mm-hmm. and, and a-holes, too. Mm-hmm. I experience them every day. Yeah. So can foreigners. But don't you think that one of the reasons what you're complaining about is... You're dealing with people who may not be able to assess nuance because they're new to the culture. Yes. You know, that's part uh, of the and, problem. And, and don't, don't care to attempt to mm-hmm. assess right. the nuance. Right. Yeah, whatever it is. I, I don't know what... Right. There's, there's, there's multiple reasons. Not, right. not all of them are being bad people. Right, okay. There's just reasons they come across the way they come across. Not all of them that good. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Most, mm-hmm. most. Okay. Eight, nine, 80, 90 okay. percent. Okay. okay. So, but that's not my point. Now mm-hmm. I'm on to the parking. Oh. On the parking, guys. Now, there's this new thing in L.A. where it used to be you could park and then get out of your car like an adult and pay. Oh. Now you got to pay before you park. Yeah. And uh, I was doing uh, Conway and Steckler over here, and I was parking over at the radio station, which is an empty parking lot because right. it's, a, you know, it's a radio, it's a business, yeah. and it's at 8 o'clock at night, and there's no cars in the place. And there's the little gate, and the guy comes out of the tower. And, uh, I, you know, I'm going to park in the closest spot to where we are, which is about uh, 18 feet from where we are in the well-lit thing. And he says uh, $2.50. And uh, I drive a uh, sports car, and I sit a little low, and I got my wallet up my ass where it belongs. And uh, I said, uh, well, instead of me digging the wallet out, I'll just, yeah, okay, let me just park the car, get this wallet's in my back pocket. He said, no, two fifty now. I said, uh, really? Not going to let me just park the car, get up out of the car, and then get the wallet out of my... I got the cargo pants with the flap on the pocket, and it's buttoned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really, I'm really going to do a lot of digging. I got the serious bucket seats. I, I've I, seen I you do a lot of digging to get the uh, wallet out of there. I've seen you building to this conflict. You've yeah. Been, you've been trying to evoke someone into this one. No, I've done this before. Oh, okay. Right. I did before. Yeah. I had it in Hollywood yes. when, we, when we did the uh, San Gennaro feast. The guy yes. said 10 bucks, and I said, okay... Let me just get out of my car. And he said, no, 10 bucks now. And I said, I'll park right here and I'll get out of my car and I'll give you the $10. He said, no, nope, 10 now. And I said, nope, asshole. I'm going across the street. And he said, okay, don't worry about it. And I said, F you. And I drove across the street and parked. But this this is the kind of civil disobedience that I want. So yeah. anyway, the guy said, give me the 250 And I said, just let me park my car and I'll get out of the car and I'll give you, give you my wallet. And he said, no, 250 And I told him to blow me. And I turned turn around and parked on the street. But this is what I want. It's not okay to give him the 250 It's not okay for an adult who drives an expensive car who's in the middle. But by the way, give me a worst-case scenario. What, I, uh, what, leave my car and start running and laughing like a madman while he has my $40,000 car? Or I throw the keys at him and yell, you lose, Poncho, and then start screaming and running? 
What, what, what do I do? Yeah. He lets me in. I drive in a circle for an hour. Yeah. What, what is the worst case scenario that yeah. could happen to him letting me in? Exactly. Where am I going? Yep. I'm leaving my car. There's not another soul in the place. Here's all I'm saying for everybody. Please, everyone, wherever you are, wherever you go, it's not okay. Mm -hmm. to call the, tell the guy, hey, you know, be polite the first time. Say, all right, you know, I'm sitting on my wallet. Would you mind if I got out of my car? If he says no, ask him one more time. Third time, call him an a-hole and don't park there. Mm -hmm. Let's all do that with everything. Mm -hmm. Please. That's a good idea. Please can we do this, everybody. Now, who you wouldn't do this, Drew? I'm not. You as good, I'm not as good at it as you. Oh, I, mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't treat you like that. No, you wouldn't abuse the parking guy. It's harder for me to do it. Why? I'm not as good at it as you are. What? What's it going to be good? You, you, the guy won't trust you to get out of your goddamn car and get your wallet out of your effing pocket. Yeah, strangely, I would come out looking like an ass. Really? Yeah. Would you feel bad? Yeah, a little bit. You feel bad if you call the guy an a hole? Yeah. This guy's really? Doing his job. Yeah. Yeah, but screw him if he can't figure no, I, out I, what's I, right. I and what's agree wrong. with you, and, and I've seen you execute it. You're brilliant. Well done. I uh, listen. These all of these guys need abuse. Yeah, yeah. All of them. Well, you're, the you guy, treat your neighbors you know, the, the same way. I noticed. The guy who says you right? can't leave. Oh, Drew with his pager, everybody. You're saved by the bell. Unacceptable. Laurel. Yeah. You're 36. Yes. Am I the oldest person that's ever called this show? No, not hardly. Okay. That's good. Um, oh, but my name's Cheryl. It's not Laurel. All right, listen. We've already... We're, the bloom is off the robes. Yeah, whatever. So what do you want? All right. Um, I've been seeing a married guy. Mm-hmm. And at first it was... You know, I thought it was just understood. We were just having sex. I mean, I didn't want anything from him. I didn't think he wanted anything from me. It was great. Mm hmm And then we spent one pretty incredible evening together. Yeah, you wanted something from him, please. Well, that's what he keeps saying. He keep, We had this one night together, and then after that, it was like, oh, we have to talk about our relationship, and something's going on. And what what happened that night? What was so special about that night? Anal. Oh. Well, I had seven orgasms, and that's never happened to me before, ever. She okay. said eight, and she said six. But never seven. Never seven. Ne never seven, no. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was incredible. It just, you know, and I think he had a good time, too. And... Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, there was nothing that was said. It all was, right, all right. So now what? Well, now, so anyway, he kept wanting to talk about the relationship and blah, 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 blah. So finally I just said, okay, I love you. I don't want anything from you. I don't want to, you know, mess up your life, but, but I do love you. Is well, that, ever since then. Is that true? Well, yeah, I do. I do. I do. Okay. But, but I don't, I really, truly don't want anything from him. Did you have a bad breakup or horrible relationship or something at one time? Oh, always. Yeah, I, so you I, need so this guy he needs to remain unavailable because the moment that you actually have a real relationship with him, it's too threatening, right? Really? Well, of course, you, you're in control now, right? You can control the distance and the intimacy, and he's never really going to be in with you because he's always got his wife, and that's fine. So you don't have to risk being in a real relationship. You don't have to risk all the catastrophe. In fact, is. The, the, judging by the way you're behaving, this pro guy probably is a good guy and not the kind of abuser that you've been used to mm -hmm. being with. How he's good kind a guy of, could be? He's kind of a prick. I, I'll get you, get you wrong. Don't get me wrong. He's kind of a prick. But, kind of but, but compared, to, compared to the other guys. Great guy. Kind of a prick. But, no, he's, he really is a great guy. Yeah, and the I, fact that she I've can't never... handle being with him is what tips me off that he's probably a decent guy. Why he's with... Mm, screw around with his wife. Uh, well, uh, he's not an abuser. Yeah, anymore. Not an abuser. Stop all. Now, I said that, we haven't seen each other in person. we he still calls me, and we still email and stuff. But he doesn't. We haven't seen yeah. each other in person. Why? I think he wants to take himself away from me. All right. Oh, he's he's afraid. Now he think. now he's afraid because you said I love you. No, I think he he's afraid that I am going to fall for him oh, and get boy. hurt. Yeah. Mm. No, not no. Mm. Yes. Exactly what George no, just said. Because he helped me through. I did have a really bad breakup recently, and he he helped me through it. It started off the. No, I know, but. You said I love you, and that scared him that off. That scared him off. Well, yeah. It's, yes. Yeah, it's, right. yeah. Thirty-six. I, that's that's the part I was about to say. I'm I'm amazed. I'm amazed at people who be on the planet for thirty-six years and just have zero understanding of people. Most importantly, themselves. What no their bearings. Don't know what's going on. I'm not sure if I'm on the radio. <laughs> I guess I hear the f word all the time. <laughs> What goes on? All right, let me yell at her uh, very quickly. Listen, Laurel. Yeah. Uh, 
I'm sorry you've not been able to have good relationships in your life, but that doesn't mean you got to get caught up with a string of unavailable guys. Uh, I'd suggest no relationship for a period of time. Get a little therapy. Get your crap together. Do a little yoga. Listen to some classical music. Get into your career. Whatever it is. Do that chick wait, thing. Wait. That no, got no, no. Wait, quiet. Wait, wait. Get a vibrator. What's your find question? You. Wait. What's your question? All right. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. I'm 36 years old. Yeah. You know what it's like to be a 36-year-old woman? Oh, Adam does. Your, your hormones are raging. I have to have... I said get a vibrator. No, that doesn't... Oh, God, she is nutty. Dude, the vibrator does not cut it. All right, what do you do for a living? Uh, I can't say. I'm, uh, I'm known in the community. All right, you're known, known in the community. <laughs> yeah, for pushing a shopping cart around and dragging a bag of your fecal matter. Oh, come on, let's find out what she does. No, she's known in the community. <laughs> No, she's Come a on. crossing guard. Get a known basic. in the community. Laurel, what what <laughs> kind of what kind of work do you do? I can't say that either. I'll give it away. Are you in government? No. Are you in healthcare? Uh, I, like, like, I'm not doing 20 questions with the screwball Laurel. Uh, like you're you're horny. Find some 20 year old guy to hum. Yeah, that's probably what she don't do. have any kids. That's probably what she should do. A 20 year old guy's yeah, just right. That's right. Dave. Yes. Oh, she sounded so Dave? nutty. You're 20. What's up, Dave? Uh, been with my girlfriend now for five years. Mm -hmm. She's 22. Mm -hmm. She's uh, just graduated college. Mm -hmm. And she's ready to get married. Mm -hmm. And I'm not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you've been with her how long? Yeah. Five years. Five years. Are you surprised that after five years she'd want to get married? Well, at least 20. Yeah, yeah I'm she's 20. 22. <laughs> yeah, well, 22. I mean, five year relationship. What do you think she's hanging around for? Marriage. All right. Well, there you go. Well, now yeah, but it still doesn't doesn't mean that they couldn't get married at twenty five. I know she's declared her major. Chicks ain't gonna do that. Yeah, she's declared her major, and she's saying, you know, ask her get off the pot. Right. And uh, be honest. You're not ready to get married. That's all right. You don't have to get married. All but, right. But to, string, but, but to string her along with the expectation that you're going to. Yeah. You may not be ready till you're thirty, right? Yeah. She, I don't she, know. She, I'm not ready. Well, whatever it is, you got to give her a, an idea. Well, what your are you in love? Like. I don't know. Like, I, yeah. I want to move out away right now. From her? I, I want to go to Maui. Oh. That's All right. what I'm calling. Well, break up. Break up and go to Maui? Yep. So Yeah. Because, like, you the guys, fact that you're thinking that way means you need well, to break up Dave, with her. Dave, you've been with her since you were 15, right? Yeah. yeah you you want to you wanna surf. You want to experience other women, right? Yeah. All right. So you, you need to be free and wander around for about 10 years. He wants to smoke a lot of pot. You want to smoke a lot of pot and surf in Maui, work on a sprout farm, right? <laughs> what are you going to do in Maui? I got uh, some friends out there. Got a place to live, surf. That's all I want to do. Mm -hmm. That's right. You going you gonna to work? Yeah, of course. Where do you work? Uh, whatever I can find. All right. Right now, I'm boxing porn. All right. Boxing porn? Yeah. Is it kickboxing or just straight to Marcus of Queensberry? Yeah. Just, uh, it's all kinds. See <laughs> <laughs> what the pot does. Yeah, Dave, Dave has got to stay with, like, uh... <laughs> Makes you sharp. Bagging instead of boxing. That'll be good for him. Yeah. Grocery bagging. Boxing porn. Uh, Dave is in no condition to get married. Mm -mm. No, uh, his mental no. state. No. Listen, he's not fit to be married. No. He's not even fit to be tied. He needs to, uh, he needs to go to Maui and kill some brain cells and bang around for a while, play some hacky sack and surf. See, Drew, I've told you this many times. This is what, this is what's wrong with surfing. He, you talk about drugs sort of taking over your life. You, yeah. you live oh, yeah. for these drugs, oh, these no, addictions. There's, there's surfing and skiing versions of this too. There's literature out there. There's medical literature on people who get consumed by a lifestyle. Yeah, you get... They, they prepare for it all year, and then there's the season. Right. That's all they do. And surfing, and, you know, not even so much a season. I mean, if you go to Maui, just surf all the time. And what happens is, is just like heroin or speed, your life just supports mm -hmm. whatever this yep. preoccupation and there's is. there's a certain social life around it. There's certain drug and alcohol use patterns. Yeah, meanwhile, you can't get anything done because... You, you can't go to school, you can't get a degree, you can't, get, you can't build a career for yourself. The only thing you can do is work sort of menial jobs mm -hmm. to support your surfing habit. And then the next thing you know, you blink your eyes and you're like 33. And uh, all, now all, what? I, 
<laughs> Everyone I know is into surfing. This is what happened. Uh, all I need is some tasty waves, cool buzz, and I'm fine. Yep. And then all I can do is think about when the next swell's coming in, when the next one's the next time. It's really, it's a replace heroin with, with surfboards, and uh, that's it. It's the yeah. same thing. Yeah, a, I mean, you know, it's a little healthier. I'll give them that. Uh, Nate? Yeah. You're 24? I am. You work How's it in a going, guys? Good. You work in a porn shop? I do. Um, I've worked there for about three years. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. I think. Three uh, years? Yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty long haul in yeah, a, in a porn uh, shop because they usually have pretty quick turnover, those places. That's a career. Well, you know, it started off as just kind of like a little summer job to kind of get me some extra money. Sure. While well, they waited for the ski season to start. Right. And yeah. then. And uh, it just kind of. Is, is that for the ski season? No, no, I don't ski. Uh, you live in Colorado and you don't ski? <laughs> no, I don't. I'm actually, I'm not really an outdoors person. I'm, I'm a sports person. I like basketball, basically stuff well, like that. Well, it's good. It's good that you work at a place with no windows then. <laughs> that's, I don't know if that's good or not. But well, you're not an outdoors guy. Yeah, at least he's I assessing so. it. I don't know yeah. if that's good yeah. or not. <laughs> that's good that I work at a porn shop. We do have one little window. Just keep an eye on the parking lot. Even, even sure. Nate. I do. Yeah, we do. Even Nate's wondering whether three years in a porn shop is good for him. <laughs> I'm always just spooked. I see bars. I just passed a bar today called the Bullet, and uh, no window. Like I, even if you got to paint a window on there, it's it's spooky seeing buildings. You, you know, you don't think about it when you see the just entire face of the building. It's just a door right yeah. in the middle. It's creepy. Mm-hmm. You almost get the little dungeon feel going. Yeah, we well, wonder what's going on. How to well, get out? Porn. That's what's going on. All right. So what's the question? Okay. What I was going to check and see was just basically. I guess what I want to see is what you guys think I should do. Um, i uh been going with my girlfriend for about three or four months now, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't, like, she has a brother and a sister, and she has an older brother. She's 19. Um, her older brother is 20. And uh, so I, I, I know him, and he knows me and everything, but we haven't really got to know each other, like, on a good level yet. This mm-hmm. is your girlfriend? My girlfriend's brother. Uh, yeah. And um, what happened was I caught him the other day, in one of the booths in back having sex with another man Uh in the booth. How did he get in there? I mean, didn't you see him come in? Well, I think what happened was he he would... I I started at 4 o'clock and work until midnight. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think he got there, like, right before I came in. And I don't know if he knows I work there or not. I mean, he didn't. I don't think he knew before. He didn't know this? No, I don't think so. I mean, I don't really talk to him that much. All right. And you, uh... But you recognized uh, him. Well, I, re- I thought I recognized him because we have the cameras in back. Uh-huh. And, uh, Wait, you have a surveillance monitor? Yeah, we, ha- we have cameras so we can keep an eye out for just that kind of stuff. <laughs> and, and what do you do when you see uh, some glory hole and going on? You, uh, what we basically do is uh, take our little batons in back and bang on the doors and <laughs> just basically tell them to get the hell out. <laughs> and that's what you did? And your brother-in-law? Your... Well, I... I wasn't quite sure if it was him or not, but it looked just like him. But I mean, he comes spilling I went out. I back there, and I kind of started knocking on the door, and I was like, what's going on in there? And I heard all this rustling, you know, like pulling pants up real quick. And yeah. Like, oh, of course. And, this uh, is an outrage. Like, you know, you better open this door right now before I uh, really? call the cops on you. Really? Yeah. Wow. And they opened the door, and it was him, and I, it, you know. Right. I now, mean, now, th- these. How outraged the, can you be in a porn These booze. Oh, the temerity. And uh, these these uh, these booze. I mean, you got you got rolls of paper towels to mop up the semen, and you know, you're exactly. outraged. But these these booze uh, aren't they, they show dirty movies in these booze? Yeah, you, you put in a dollar. There's thirty channels, and you put in a dollar, and mm-hmm. you can just flip to the channels. Hold on one like second. Who's a, who does not have porn at? Uh, it's a, uh, you can get a VCR, DVD, color TV combination for like eighty bucks now. I mean. Really? No, uh, you just, I got to do my beating on the road. That's just me. A lot of guys like to do it in their living room, maybe the bathroom. Not me. I like to spank off in uh, places with no windows, the bad indoor-outdoor carpeting, and lots of foot traffic going by the hollow core door that's poorly hung without the mortise hinges through. But maybe they expect stuff like this. You know what I mean? Maybe they're looking for that. They're looking for a date. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I'm just talking about why the booze are constructed in the first place. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've told you I've visited those booze before. Oh yeah. Yeah, it, it's diabolical. You you put in you put in a buck, 
They run. And you, you, they put in a buck, and you have to pick your movie, and you're flipping around. By the time you settle on one, yeah. the thing runs out. So now it's pants up and another buck because you got the change in your pant pocket. They've timed it perfectly, so you start your beat off, and the thing runs out. It's like <laughs> seven, over again. seventy dollars later, <laughs> four hundred oh quarters God. later. Nate, yeah, am I right or am I right? That's that's pretty much. Basically you guys have done scientific it. research <laughs> on how long it takes a guy to bust a nut, and and how much change, how long it takes him with the change out of the pocket, and and so guys go in there and watch porn. Is yeah. that what they're supposed to be doing? Uh. Basically, they just go back there to do their thing. Is there is there a roll of paper towels in there? No, I mean we don't supply anything. We yeah. don't like hand them paper towels or nothing. Do the, like uh, what happens? I think a lot is either they just bring in their own stuff. They have a or guy they have to use a bathroom with a mop and go get a bunch of stuff. Yeah, even, yeah, <laughs> and. Uh, Clean up booth and and year after going clean up detail or they probably do that early well, when on. I, when I first started, I right. had to do it. Right, oh, that's where oh, you begin. God. Well, I've got mail room with the manager, and I've kind of convinced her to hire other people to come in just to do that. Oh, smart. Describe her, huh? The manager. Yeah. Describe her. Yeah. Um. Big ass. She's actually pants, she's actually stacking. like an older lady. She's a uh, pretty bald. She a uh, chain smoker. Yeah, cha- exactly. Yeah, chain <laughs> I know the type. She uh, she's got like three teeth. Clamp on uh, earrings. Yeah, she uh. Sea hag. She's the, she's like the American badass kind of lady. Like a biker chick. Tattoos. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, now, hold on a second, Nate, because right. I'm, I'm, I'm enthralled with this uh, lifestyle <laughs> you have here. And like I said, you, you're right that these things eventually... Let me tell you about the gays. <clears throat> They're like roaches. They find their way in, mm-hmm. and they take over. You know what I'm saying? They need to meet other guys. And, of course... As guys, there's no such, there's no equivalent to the glory halls. Like, there's no bar we can go to and just bang chicks in the bathroom and stuff like that. So, we can't turn these places into these, into this. From D- heterosexual males. Heterosexual yeah. males, yeah. yeah. So, you know, what, 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 we got a TGI Fridays. We can go there and send a couple of light beers down the bar and see if we can get, get a phone number. But there's no, just, hey, I need a quickie. Right. I'm just going to bend you over something, place. But, of course, with two guys making the, you know, who's saying no, Right. Oh, no. So all you got to do is sort of work it out. But now you got to kind of find the spot. You got to find the position. You got once you work it out, then you get a little system going. Now you're in. Interesting, Drew. Oh, you're you're into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. All right. We'll uh, finish up with uh, Nate and the porn lifestyle after this. Back in a minute. Half of all new HIV infections in this country happen to people under the age of 25. Protect yourself. Call toll-free 1-866-344-KNOW. Hi, I'm Rob Schneider. You're listening to Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew on Loveline, my favorite show. You're doing it. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. All right, that's um, Adam. That's true. Phone number one eight hundred L V E one nine one. So I went to the dentist today. Oh my god! I had the guy tell me a guy was great. He said uh, I was. <laughs> I was like the only honest thing I've ever heard out of the dentist. It wasn't my normal dentist. The other guy came in. He was taking my stitches out, and uh, like I said, it's always a bad sign if you're going to the dentist and having the. St- I'm going there oh, just to have the stitches taken out. And he took a look at this uh, titanium bolt that's in my jaw, and he, he was looking at it, and he put a little light in there, and taking a look, and uh, said, uh, yeah, 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 they, they want to see how it's healing when they're taking the stitches out, and he goes, uh, yeah, it looks good, looks good. And then he took a beat, and he goes, well, you know, it doesn't look good, but it's, <laughs> you know, I mean, it looks good. I mean, it's, well it's healing, well it's done. healing. And I thought, yep, yeah, that's, that's true, because usually when I open a guy's mouth, there's just a bunch of... <laughs> Big p- patch area that looks like a hamburger when it's gone bad in the uh-huh. refrigerator, and you've got a nice, nice bolt hanging out of it. It doesn't look good. doesn't look good, but I, I appreciated his candor as he stopped and had explained that, no, did it really you, did didn't you look good. take look, note of that with him? Did you? I thought it was funny, and I told him I appreciate it. It's, yes, you have, uh, Frankenstein's neck is, uh, is taking its place, its place in your mouth, and it really doesn't look good, but... Uh, Glad, uh, he, glad the healing was uh, going okay, and uh, I'm just clanking around with that mirror. Yeah, yeah. Famous, uh, you know, Dennis. Every answer, with Dennis is. Uh, I, I always have uh, improvements of uh, how they can improve their work, and they always go, and they're very defined about. Oh, they have them. 
They <laughs> have them. Yeah, they make those uh, things out of plastic. Oh, they have them. They, they should heat that water. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There. They have them. Somebody's got They have them. them. Oh, yeah. They have them. It's a really... Uh, say it doesn't exist. It makes you look... Now you look like an idiot because they have them. And you don't. You don't. Yeah. And who's they? Find me. Someone find me they. That's who I want to start going to. They. For everything. So I answer. Oh, they have them. Nate? Yeah. All right, buddy. 24. <clears throat> Working at the porn shop. Yes, sir. What's the name of the porn shop, just for fun? It is called the Meat Shack. <laughs> oh, no way. Yeah. How do they spell meat? M-E-E-T. Oh, all right. <laughs> well, I mean, all right. And, that, and then you're surprised when people come there to do their thing with and meet other people? Um, when I first started working there, like, it surprised me that people did that stuff. But, I mean, I've worked there so now, long. When you, you say people, you mean gays. Yeah. The gays. Yeah, that's, that's where I like to say. Come in there. Right. I mean, you know, at first, like I said, at first it was like, you know, what are they doing? You know, but anymore it's just, uh, it's just second nature there. And, and do, you, do you really have uh, surveillance cameras up in the booths? Not in the booths, but like in the hallway between the booth doors. So you see a couple of guys walk into a booth and you know what's up? Yeah, I mean, there's no is, question. Is there some laws preventing that you have to intervene on this stuff? Um, I mean, yeah. why do you... Why do you you know? Yeah, I would. <laughs> I don't think I don't. I've never been told that there's like an actual law against it, but um, it's more. It's kind of like more of a. I want to say thrill thing for me, but it's kind of fun to you yeah. know bust somebody when they think they're pulling one over on you. Yeah, so, it's courtesy to other customers. Let's be go rouse the gays. Yeah, it's like you know how stupid do you think I am? You know. Yeah, but <laughs> see, for me, yeah, I couldn't get out of. That. I couldn't stay away from oh that boat. I this... couldn't be far enough from that boat. My, my question is, you know what? What is it you think people are coming in there for? You know what I mean? How stupid they think you are. Yeah, a lot of them care. have a nice gift section, a nice snack shack. Oh. Well, you know what's kind of funny? Stimulating is, conversation. Yeah. You, 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 like some guys will come in and, you know, there's always the regulars that come in that, that always sure. come in regular, on a regular basis. And they'll go stand and look at the magazines and then a, a new guy will walk in and he'll go back to the booth. And like three different guys that are just camped around the store will just like run to the booth at the same time. Oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You know, fresh meat. Ooh, let's go. Yeah, and what? you get your baton out. And... Yeah, I'm like, I, I just I start watching the cameras. I'm like, all right, you know, who's the lucky one today? Oh man, you have to like light off a uh, AIDS fogger every once in a while <laughs> too. Just pull that, that thing. That'd be the main concern is that it's a public health risk. I mean, that's... yeah, I mean, when I go back there, I try to stay back there as little as you know, least amount of time as I can. <laughs> But for yeah. the most part, um, yeah. All right. All, right. All right. So, what's your question? Well, he saw his brother-in-law or his or girlfriend's, girlfriend's brother. brother going in there and so there you go. it up. All right. So he's guys. There you go. All right. Yeah. So I was basically just going to check and see. Uh, I guess from your guys' point of view, like I respect what you guys think because I listen to you guys all the time. Well, I mean, what would you guys do in this situation if you were me? All right. Well, keep, keep it I'm quiet. Kind of keep it quiet. And, I, uh, I, I. Here's the thing. Here's what you got to look for. Be respectful. No, here, here's what you have to look for. There are times when you have to come forward with uncomfortable information because when it does come out, people are going to say, well, you knew. Why didn't you say anything? You know? Yeah, yeah. Or if, well, if it's something that's important for someone's safety or health or something. Yeah, but there's that. like a friend sees somebody's having an affair, sees yeah. a friend's husband. That, it's like, that too. But again, that's affecting people's mental health and well-being and stuff. Right. This... Is not. This is and not if if and when it does come out that he's gay, and she probably already knows or whatever, uh, you're not going to be implicated. No one's going to start yelling at you. Well, well, you knew. We could have yeah. stopped it. You know. No. Yeah, just a little. No way. And just get the hell out of there. And he's never going to show back up there again. What are you doing there? Get a job. He's got a job. He's, mm. he's busting up the gays. Well, strangely, he's, he's, uh, strangely kicking in the it. door of the jizz closet. You know what I mean? It, it's a little... Strangely thrilling for him. Getting off on it a little, mm. little, little power of authority. I, I really Not only that just a little into it. Yeah. Well, this is why uh, I started the show off talking about the a holes who uh, man the parking lots here. But this is there's two types of personalities. There's one that would want nothing to do with this ever. I don't care if there was 75 uh, guys in there forming uh, some huge. Uh, uh, daisy, a, chain. They, they, a daisy chain that looked like the AIDS quilt. <laughs> I, I would not go in there. I don't care what went on in there. If, if, if semen, if I saw it coming up over the top of the door, if it was like like the the shining with the out of the, the elevator, elevator doors <laughs> open and just semen comes pouring. <laughs> or yes, he saw the shining. Yes. You, he you saw the shining. Happen? I was gonna say you can't. You cannot yeah. talk about the shining. I did. I saw it. I saw it. Well, why don't you talk about he, it? He made, I, he made a uh, shade. He did. He 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 did the day after you saw it. Yeah. 
Uh, yes, I would not do anything about it. But then there are guys who love that. They love that. They love that thing where it's like, uh, yeah, I just want to step out the back and get something out of my car. Once you leave, you can't come back. Yeah, see the green Impala right there? That's my car. So you can just watch me. I'm just going to go. Uh, you can't come back in once, uh, once you leave. Yeah, I got the ticket stub right here. You literally, I just see my just guy. I just got to grab my, my glasses from the car. No. I can't let you back in. <laughs> yeah. Retards. I'm not that guy. My guy, is, I'm, I'm the guy who says, go do whatever you want and come back whenever you feel like it. Yeah, I'm pretty much that guy. I used too. to teach traffic school. I'd walk in, some guy'd walk into my traffic school three hours late, five hours late. I got lost. I thought that I'd sit down. Yeah, but I didn't know. Sit down. Well, I got to make this up during what? No, just sit down. Let's get the hell out of here. See you at the day. Jesus <laughs> Christ. What's up with all you screwed up people? You get some feeling of power busting up homos? Or keeping some guy from coming back into the theater. But I think Nate has a special focus on the homosexuals that bothers me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Listen, you, you don't like the gays. Mm -hmm. You pee in the fire extinguisher, and then you go up and down uh, Ventura Boulevard, and you squirt them. That's what you do. Samantha, what's going on? Hi. Samantha's 22. <laughs> Thank you for taking my call. Um... My fiancé and I have been together for about a year, and um, I walked in on him masturbating to a porn film, and it really upset me. And Sure. Yeah, he said he wouldn't do it again, and I walked in oh. on him again. And I walked <laughs> right. in on him. Oh, my <laughs> God. I, well, he got it out of his system. You know, he got that well, one out. I've used that one. <laughs> well, it's gone now. I got you know, it out of me. I won't be back doing, again. Like, in the other room with the door wide open, and I'm on the couch, and I'm like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> but so we talked about it. And he got rid of all the films, and but now I'm really into it. And I I don't not with him, but I do it by myself, I'm like daily, sometimes several times a day. Like I masturbate while I watch porn, and I don't understand why I love it so much, but it upsets me that he watches it. Does he know you're doing this? No, I'm so scared about him finding the tape. Like, I take it wherever I go whenever I leave the house. He doesn't find it. So funny. You're worried about people finding it, so you put it in your purse. <laughs> I, I swear I carry it in my backpack to school. <laughs> See, oh it seems God. like there's a higher percentage of people finding the porn if you put have it on your person. <laughs> I just don't want him to find it. Oh, listen, hold on a second. Women are so dumb. They're not crafty enough to hide the goddamn porn somewhere in the house <laughs> after they can pile it, take it with them, and then eventually when her and collection grows. by the way, grows, when the guy finds it, it's going to be like, oh, my God. Oh my God. Well, when the guy finds it, he's going to think it was one of his. He's going to think it was the people who lived here before or something. Man, he's not, like, never going to suspect her. Yeah, he's, he's like, oh, I don't remember putting one in a Kotex box. Oh, but, my God. All right, this is a windfall. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm doing handsprings. Samantha, look, what you gotta you probably won't be so disturbed if he does this with you. I'm really Yeah. So? Yeah. And so I think maybe that's something you ought to include in him in with you. So you guys can do this together so you don't feel so clandestine and guilty about it and so he doesn't feel so flipped out and guilty. And what about um and what about the part about her being sort of revolting when he does it, but when she what, you know, are you love, watching, that love yeah. hate thing, that, there's some momentum there. Yeah, we I, don't hear about this one, but it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I really, it really upset me when I found him watching the. All right, well, let, let's let's crime. do let's do a few. Let me make a few uh, few guesses here. Uh, did your did your dad cheat on your mom? Um. Well, my mother's been married like five times. Mm. So. No. All right, mm -hmm. she's in that case. Kooky mm -hmm. mom and all, all bets are off. <laughs> so you so you distrust men. So you're, this sort of reinforces that men are going to you know, drift away from you and they're going to be roaming. And it's just further evidence of that, right? Absolutely. Did your mom fill your head with, uh, you know, this son of a bitch, he cheated, or uh, we're out of here because he's no good? Well, my or... mother was actually the one that had a bunch of affairs on her husband. Oh, interesting. Well, that's interesting. Um, and it's funny, I felt cheating, but I didn't, moms aren't normally the cheaters. Yeah, and yeah. I... I've, I've only had one boyfriend cheat on me, and it was like when I was my first love when I was 15. Right. Let me say this. Uh, all right, so listen, you're fine. You're making good choices. Uh, okay. What part? Is there some particular kind of porn you're into? Um, yeah, um, anal. I'm really into that, and he's not quite as into it as I am. Like I Suddenly love. I, I'm anal. getting bogus. Suddenly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I am too. So I bought that particular film, and um, yeah, what, what's really, it? What's it called? The Mason Jar. <laughs> <laughs> um, double dip anal. All right. So chicks can't think that fast. That's a, is it the uh, you bang us your anus theory? 
is it a series? Series? No. It's a series. Sure. Oh my god. What's it called? You bang us, Uranus. <laughs> God. Oh, my God. I just love that name. All right, Samantha. Oh. Yeah, you're fine, baby doll. Mm. All right. Uh, I don't know. Let me say this. That's enough. Yeah, but then she came up the double yeah. dip. Yeah. Let me say this. Her and her mom's a nut shot. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know how I uh, yap all the time about, uh, you know, some of these people we talk to, they're on their third kid and yeah. they're 19 years old. Yeah. I'm, I'm always, I, I wonder, no, no intervention yeah, yeah. at a certain point. Yeah, yeah. Um, fifth marriage. Third. Should, uh, after the fourth marriage doesn't work out, should you just say, nah, nah, we're not going to issue you a license. Yeah. Like, you know, like uh, Tyson bites uh, Vander, uh, Vander Holyfield's ear off and then he can't get licensed mm -hmm. in like Nevada. They go, you know what? They, they, they size a guy's sort of career up. Yeah. They go, eh, we've seen about enough out of you. Yeah. We've seen enough. Yeah. No more. Uh, wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be okay with the marriage license too? I would you, think you're so. coming in for number five? Yeah, I would hope so. You got, you're chewing the gum, you got the beehive and the clamp on earrings and it's like, you know what, sweetie? We made a mistake with Liz Taylor a while back. Uh, no, you want to get married? You have to. You have to go to Oregon or something. You know We're what's not interesting? Gonna give it to you. you don't see so much of that anymore. And people say forty-five and under, because yeah. after you know forty-five and older, that's that was growing around having lots of marriages. They didn't have sex unless they had marriage. So if you wanted to have multiple sexual partners, you had to have multiple marriages. It's interesting. Yeah. And, and while uh, you know since the sixties and, and since then, people they do this screwing around before they get married. Yeah, people. People screw around before they get married. They screw around During while, the <laughs> while they're married. You see more of this sort of like they, uh, they get married, uh, they break up, they screw around for a few years, they get married again, they do right. some screwing around during that. But yes, yes, back then it's like you want to screw around, you had to get married 11 yeah. times. Yeah. You became uh, Richard Burton. Larry King. All right. <laughs> And what does is, what is wife number seven think when the guy's telling them how, you're the only one in my life. I could never love a woman. Like, really? 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 I mean, isn't it sort of like the guy's come, like you're the judge and this criminal's come up before you 15 times and he's saying, this time. This is it. This is it. I found Jesus last time I was in the joint. I'm on the straight and narrow. Like, could you ever believe that person? No. Would you ever want to hang out with anyone who'd been married seven times? No. Like, don't you think guys like Larry King and Liz Taylor are just fundamentally horribly flawed? Well, Liz's got her problems. And Larry doesn't? I don't know. Okay, buddy. Don't say anything bad. Hello? Is this Love Line? Call 1-800-LOVE-191. Adam and Dr. Drew will be right back. Love Line on 94.7 at RK. Dr. Drew, phone number 1-800-LV-191. All right. Drew, did you watch those Grammys last night? No, I saw a bunch of excerpts. I saw about five minutes of it. Yeah, whatever. Why? I, I just I didn't see any of it. I was working on something, and I had no idea who won. I didn't know uh, anything. I didn't uh, I didn't to get all caught up today. Any, you know, I, yeah. I watched the Dixie Chicks perform, and I thought, you know, you haven't told your story about uh, Natalie in a long time. And I thought about my first encounter with her. Was it I'm politically incorrect? And people were like, who is this chick? And the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the publicist, for the first time, did something very, very uh, sort of appropriate. Just said, you'll know who she is. Just relax. Just trust me. I, uh, you know what? Was I on P.I. with the Dixie Chicks tour, or was that just you? Just me. It was well before they were the Dixie Chicks. She was, I mean, I had no idea who she was. Yeah, well, I just and remember was, you were on with uh, the Dixie Chicks. And, and Woody Harrelson was attacking her because she took a sort of an anti-pot stance. And, I thought uh, I did it with them, too, but... Maybe. Eh, who the hell knows? Anyway, but I thought it would be worth telling that story again. That story cannot be told enough. Yeah? All right. Well, it was at the uh, first Grammy, so yeah. I'll, I'll try to uh, make it quick. Oh, screw it. It's going to take a while with this one. Uh, I Well, the, the, when they won their first Grammy was at the Shrine, but uh, it was a few weeks before that. I got a call from uh, my 
then manager's assistant said, uh, "You know the Dixie Chicks?" I said, "Yeah, I know them. I mean, they were they were up for a Grammy and they'd sold some records. It was their first record?" And Have pe- they been on Love Line, the TV show? I think no. I don't think so. No. I don't remember meeting any of right. them. Right. And uh, I, I'd heard of them, and people had heard of them, but there wasn't any big whoops. And uh, they said, well, you know, the lead singer, Natalie, wants, wants you to escort her to the, uh, to the Grammys. And uh, I said, why? I've, I've never <laughs> met her. And she said, well, she, she watches you on Loveline on MTV and uh, likes some, some joke you made about farting or something. <laughs> and I said... <laughs> oh, Jesus. I said, well... And this is really, this is how my life works. This is my life in a nutshell. I said, uh, how can I take her? I, I have a girlfriend, a longtime girlfriend, right. and uh, I, I couldn't see myself taking a, another girl to the Grammys. I think my girlfriend would get mad. And, of course, uh, the assistant uh, says, oh, no, no, no. People do this all the time. They do it all the time. It's common, common in this town. I said, what, you mean just to be like an escort? Yeah, mm-hmm. No, no, doesn't mean anything. I said, no. All right, well, what time? It's like 7 o'clock. I'm like, all right, I got to go do the radio after that. And I was like, okay, sign, sign me up. Tell her fine. Sounds like a good time. And, uh, of course, uh, my girlfriend was pissed. Of course. Pissed as hell. But uh, let me tell you the difference between the way we handle our lady friends. I told her, nine, uh, my, what I do for a living gets you, gets you good things nine out of ten times. All your concert tickets, all your friends, all this junk all the time. Once in a while, you got to bite the bullet, and it's Grammy night. And she uh, she took it. So uh, I ended up going with uh, Dickie from the Boss Tones. We ended up running late, missing like the Dixie Chicks limo. We're going to me- meet him there and blah, blah, blah. Ah! So uh, Dickie and I got ready and uh, we went over there and uh, met up with the Dixie Chicks. It's nice, really nice. Entire band, sweethearts, all of them, friendly. And uh, they, won the, they won the Grammy. And it was weird because I, I stood up and they all stood up. I knew my girlfriend was watching on TV, so I had to like give him like a good handshake, and it was like it was awkward, like weird pat on the back and a peck on the cheek, and I sort of slapped them with my palm on the shoulder. Was, nice work. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so they went up and collected their Grammy, and then we got in the limo and went to like some party. But of course, I had to go to work, so I was at the party from like you know nine ten to like nine thirty two, oh, and then boy. I I came here, you know, and they won, the, and everything was great. So. Uh, the next day, I got a uh, big bouquet of uh, roses uh, at my at my office, at the man show office, and it said, uh, "Thanks, had a good time, Natalie." You know, from the Dixie Chicks, lead singer. And I said, "Oh, that was nice." I was telling my partner, Daniel, <laughs> Jimmy, said, that was nice. I had a good time, sent me some flowers. That's nice. And uh, and then I called her. I, I had her cell phone number, and I and I called her, and I said, "Hey, uh, Natalie, I got I got the flowers." And she was like, it was a little confused. Like, she was like, huh? I was like, hey, I got the flyer. And she's like, oh, 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 good, good. And she goes, I'm watching you right now on TV. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, chick's got it bad for me. You know? I said, uh, Thanks for the flowers. Had a good time. You know, when you guys come in and do the radio show. I said, all right. A day later, I get, uh, let's see, what did I get? I got like a big uh, cookie. Oversized novelty uh, hubcap size uh, cookie that says like, uh, I love Adam on it, Natalie, you know. And I uh, thought, oh, this uh, chick's uh, doesn't let up. Got it bad for the kid, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Can't say as I blame her. Because you're gloating to all your partners. Of course, I'm oh. gloating to everyone I'll hear it in the office. Yeah, this Dixie chicks. Yeah, the lead chick. Yeah, got it, got it bad for the ace man. Man, she's fl- only flesh and blood. I guess I can't blame the kid. And uh, then, then the next day, or maybe two days later, I get like a big stuffed animal or something, and it's Natalie from. And uh, Daniel and Jimmy are like, "Look, you got to call her. You got a girlfriend. I mean, this is getting a lot of control." So I call her, and I'm like, uh, "Yeah, appreciate this, appreciate that, but you know, I got, I got a girlfriend. But uh, hey, next time you come in town, you do the radio show. I have some kicks." She's like, uh, "Okay." <laughs> so then I get the uh, the next day, I get the uh, six foot sub with the sign in it that says, uh, "I will not be ignored." <laughs> <laughs> Natalie from the Dixie Chicks and I'm like wow I mean uh, this girl I mean I see her point I mean, a lot of man and you try to be direct maybe too much to man for one woman but I, I was pretty straight with her last time I talked to her I said I had a girlfriend you know and uh, wow this is alright this is her sense of humor this is what she's doing she's having a sense she's having a joke about it and you're having powwows with Jimmy and Dan yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Out, yeah we gotta put an end to this <laughs> and uh, then the next day I get the panties and it says, like, uh, 
F me now or something. <laughs> you know, Natalie from the Dixie Chicks and Daniel and Jimmy are like, hey, buddy, this is spun out of control. You you got to <laughs> you got to call this chick now and take care. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll give her a buzz on when I get home. She's like, no. Now you gotta call her. Now I had her cell phone number, so I called. She's at a pottery barn in like uh, <laughs> with her mom. Yeah, in like uh, uh, I don't know, like Tennessee with her mom. And I'm like, hey, Natalie, listen, this is Adam. You know, we had a nice conversation, but uh, apparently you didn't get the message. I got a girlfriend. The flowers were great. Flowers, the stuffed animals, the, the cookies, the panties. She's like, I didn't send any of that. And I'm like, well, I mean, I got the flowers, and then. I looked up and uh, the entire office was uh, filled with a man show employees uh, laughing like uh, with video maniac. cameras pointing. Yeah, at Jimmy you. had the video camera going, <laughs> and she's like, "Huh? What panties?" And I'm like, "Oh, uh, oh, 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 you, you, oh, you didn't send all oh, 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 stuff that stuff, 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 stuff." Not even the flower. What, what about the poo bear? What about the big, the, the, the big, big poo, 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 poo was you, right? That was you, huh? Oh. She's like, I didn't even send the flowers. I just figured my publicist did it. And I was being nice. <laughs> and I was like, Oh Christ! Listen, I I, I can't I, I can't explain. I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs> but they came in here a few months later, oh. and they were nice. We had a good time with oh, them. She and then you remember what they did? Next day, they sent over a six foot sub and a whole oh, yeah, uh, big deli uh, right. spread over here yeah. that we all uh, enjoyed. So uh, right. there's the Dixie Chicks, Class everybody. Act. Good people. And here's the thing I love. My uh, now wife and then girlfriend was mad at me. <laughs> she, she, she was mad. And I was like, what, what do you mean? I was calling her and telling her, hey, we can't do this, you know? And, and she's like, yeah, that's what I love about women. Still still can figure out a way to be pissed off. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll be back. Here it is. Bottom sucks being single today. Tons of lame people and no decent prospects. Call the Dateline. Call the Dateline. Call the Dateline. 1-877-889-DATE. Loveline! Loveline will be right back, so get your problems ready. 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 Loveline on 94.7 NRK. Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 LVE 191. Does, uh, is it just me or does everyone feel like they're running from a TV show to TV show now? You mean from the reality shows? Yeah, just in general. Like, um, oh, Survivor's going to be on. Oh, no, no, Joe Millionaire, the, the uh, finale of Joe Millionaire is going to be on the same night. This, this is the, this like is the a, television a, equivalent. A frenzied now. Television equivalent of, a, of the dot com era. This is going to torch and then. You think so? Oh yeah. I did. You, you yeah. getting caught up a little bit? No. Really? Yeah, me neither. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I am. I it used to be like, well, I like, uh, I like this show on Speed Vision, and then I like to watch uh, sixty minutes, and that yeah, was about it. And now it's like every night I'm I just conflict. Oh, oh, uh, help! Uh, get me out of here. I'm a, I'm a celebrity's on at the same time. They're, they're, this Dateline thing is on, and oh, they're doing the, the follow up of the Michael Jackson interview. It's like I, I'm missing. I, but but here's what I'm saying, Drew. I I know it's always been around. <clears throat> it's always been out there. What? It, Entertainment Tonight, yeah, uh, uh, Extra, and all these shows, these entertainment shows, yeah. and all this stuff. Doesn't it feel like we've just been beat over the head with it for like the last six months? Oh, yes. And and it, and it especially lasts like two months. Yes. Just 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 sort of TV crazy. Yeah. Like, did you see? Like now you're going into work and it's like, did you see the Michael Jacks? You, you didn't see? Do you see when Joe Millionaire? Did you see? Did you, it's like everyone's like, did you, and I'm feeling like, well, I'm not going to be able to communicate with people at my work unless you watch if it. I, I don't, if I know what they're talking about. Did you, it's weird. Though, did that you see be... what Aretha Franklin was wearing last night? Was... Did you see? Did you? And everyone's like, "Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, it was incredible." It seems and I'm like, oh, I, I missed it. We'd be I, preoccupied with such BS in the face of such a really serious world situation. Well, it was funny. I was saying to uh, Jimmy the other day, which was uh, this whole. It's it's funny that after nine eleven, the cry was, 
We all need to get back to our lives. Don't be scared, you know, to go outside. Get back to your lives. But you know what we did? We got back to other people's lives. Reality TV. Yeah, we got yeah. back to Joe Millionaire's life and yeah. Michael Jackson's life. Yeah. And uh, Melissa Rivers' life. We, didn't, we, we missed ours. We got back to someone else's. Yeah. That always happens. Though. Whenever there's a war or anything, they always everyone turns to fantasy. for. No, they do. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's a history of movies and things like that filling. filling. Yeah, sort of. Chicago's so big this year. Really, you think? Yeah, it was musicals. Yeah, I mean, but back in the 70s, it's like Nam ends in uh, 70, 73, 74, and then there's a whole slew of Vietnam <laughs> movies just come out. Like, yeah, you didn't you didn't get an ass full of it. <laughs> uh, here's here's the deer hunter. Mm. Here's coming home. Look, we didn't, we didn't make Fantasia after Nam ended. Well, How dare you? <laughs> True. Nice rebuttal. Yeah, but after, uh, we're, we're in the midst of all this now. All right. Uh, uh, and, and as as Anna makes the point, there's uh, fantasy films uh, during the war, and then the uh, war films follow after. Uh, yeah. Good time. <laughs> right. All right, Drew's right. Look, he saw The Shining. I'm still reeling. And I've gone out and looked for Raging Bull. Oh, he's not seen Raging Bull. Oh, The Shining. Mm-hmm. Anderson, he's not seen Raging Bull either. It's just such... Unacceptable. <laughs> That's all it is. Brad? Yeah. You're 30? Yep. What's up? Yeah, hey, uh, I've been smoking pot for about 13 years, and um, I just, I got to stop. And I tried going to NA, I tried going to MA, Mm -hmm. but uh, the 12-step groups just are not working for me. All right, I bet Brad has uh, seen The Shining, not seen Raging Bull. (laughs) You going to go with that? He's 30. He's 30. Brad? Yep. Have you seen The Shining? No. What about Raging Bull? No, but I have it on DVD and I'm waiting to watch it. Unacceptable. 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 Wow. What is up with people? Mm. Uh, yeah, well, of course, Drew's going to defend him, huh? Yeah. yeah. All right, Brad. It, it, maybe you need to go to an inpatient program, someplace with more structure, more intensity. And, I did uh, an inpatient program, actually. You did? How long were you there for? Um, well, I was there for three out of the four weeks and then got in a fight and got kicked out. Did you see a psychiatrist when you were there? Um, no. Because there's something more than just addiction going on here. There's a there's a reason you can't get with the program, and every well, addict every addict wants to do it an easier, kinder way. And the fact is, it takes a hell of a lot of work and a lot of commitment and a lot of surrender and a lot of pain. And there ain't no alternative. There just isn't. Well, can uh, let me let me tell you what uh, what problems I had with the twelve step groups. Um, first of all, I'm an atheist. Yeah, that's all right. Most many people are. Well, you know, uh, all, all the whole I, the whole idea is just to give you some sense of faith that when you surrender to the process, things are going to turn out okay. To give you the sort of comfort with surrender. That's the whole idea of the higher power. Right, and then, but the thing is, is when you're in the meeting and you're in the group. Did you ever get a sponsor? No. All right. Um, well, the, the treatment is done with the sponsor. No sponsor, no treatment. It's very simple. If you're not working the steps with a sponsor, you haven't even begun the process. So you've never even set foot on the process. Now, what's the part where you get in a fight in the uh, in- in-house treatment? Well, that's yeah. character logic stuff. Yeah, Brad, what's wrong with you? Uh, <laughs> well, probably a lot of things. But um, were, you, right. were you sort of physically abused growing up or abandoned or something? Um, both. Both, yeah. Oh, all right. And that, that's usually what sets this kind of thing well, what up. what about a little therapy for young Brad? Well, they, that's why I was asking if a psychiatrist saw him. He, oh. he needs a lot of work. Brad, what's, uh, what's going on? Will you work construction? No, I'm a glass blower. I make, uh, marijuana pipes for a living. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Did we talk to you before? Nope. You ever fart into one of those glass blowing things? No. Because I'd buy one of those and put it on my Christmas tree. If somebody had a, a fart in a glass? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it'd break. It wouldn't diffuse out in case of emergencies. <laughs> I think it would stay in there. Brad, oh my God. Yes. if you farted into a, a glass ball and made like a bulb out of it yeah. and then sealed it quickly, you think it would stay in there? Or would it bind to the glass? <laughs> but I don't know, man. Yeah, you got to think about this. But anyway, we, we had a long discussion about glass blowing one you, time. You blow bongs, huh? No, I, I do pipes. I do handwork. Oh, you do that? That's interesting. Uh, you yeah. just, I'm sure you've seen them, Adam, like uh, high-end, expensive yeah. uh, pipes. Yeah, I've seen that. 
I got yeah. I got one that's made out of a toilet paper roll. Nice. With the foil in there. Good yeah. job. Yeah. Proud of you. Thank you. Yeah. You know the pipe? Uh, all right, Brad. Yeah. Yeah, you do okay, right? You make money? I make good money, yeah. You're an artisan. Yeah, you need to get a little therapy at this point. You get, got some situations. He, he things needs going to be on. in a structured program. He, he, don't, he doesn't go from failing in an inpatient program to a lower level of care, mm -hmm. a higher level of care, more intense, more, more psychiatric care, more structure. You know what just cracks me up is the uh, pipe or the bong that does not stand up, especially the pipe. Huh. I had uh, one pipe for many years. Um, a guy made it for me. Mm. The guy's name was Doug. This guy had a pipe that was uh, also had the novelty pipe. It was uh, about seven foot long of two inch PVC pipe. It's <laughs> like two people to run it, you know. Oh, but this is a guy who had a shopping cart in his bedroom. For what? It was on the third floor of uh, of an apartment. Or what? It's, why not? He had his clothes in it. Hey, here's the point. He made me this pipe. Where is that guy now? Where is that guy now? Where's Doug? Yeah. Uh, Doug's married to uh, Alex Borstein from uh, Mad TV. Yeah. Is he okay? Yeah, he's doing all right. He, like, writes, does a little acting. Yeah. yeah, he does all right. He made me this pipe. It was made out of uh, that one of those hard cardboard rolls. You know, it looks like just a cardboard tube, but it's sort of thick-walled and right. whatever. right. And it was just round, you know? Yeah. It was just like a three-quarters of an inch, and it was round, and it was like five inches long, and it had a big brass uh, bell at the end of it, you know? Big, and the problem is, is it would fall over. Like, you, you couldn't, you'd have to lean it on, you know? For, for years, this thing, you'd have to prop it up, you'd have to lean it up. It would just, it, everything would fall over, ashes would go everywhere, every time. You just don't do that. You just don't make a round pipe that falls over. That's, Let's that's get what I'm to saying. <laughs> I'm so glad there's no guest tonight. It's nice to spend some us time, Adam. Yeah. You ever have one of those pipes that, that rolls over? And I just think, I was just spending a little time thinking about it just now, in fact. Mm hmm. No. Woody? Yes, sir. You're uh, 38? Yes, sir. Thank you for taking my call. Thanks for calling the program. All right, sir. Uh, my question is I've um, I'm found myself quite attracted to a woman who's in her 40s, I'm in my late 30s, mm -hmm. and I find out that she is a lesbian, mm. and my question is simply... How'd you find out? Um, I found out through some friends, and I did some background checking, and it, this may be a wild-ass shot, but Adam may even know her because she works for the parent company. She works for Viacom. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a small company. We know everyone. I, in the I company. think I know who you, who you're talking about. Uh, yeah. No, I don't. I, I don't think so. But yeah, anyway, she works for Paramount. But anyway, uh, <laughs> listen. I, I don't even know. I don't know if Anderson's first name is his. <laughs> I don't know if that's his first name or his last name. Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, anyway, I was just wondering if if uh, you or Doctor Drew could uh, enlighten me as to whether or not. When a woman says she's a lesbian, is mm -hmm. that, or is homosexuality in general, is that a genetic predisposition, or can that be a personal preference? I mean, could this woman have just had a lot of men problems in the past, or, you know, I'm just... Well, let, let, let me ask yeah. you this. You, I'm glad you bring this up, Woody. Uh, yeah. Um, Drew, mm. we, we, we know from doing this show that there are sort of lesbians and homosexuals, g gay or lesbian that were just sort of born that way, yeah. always been that mm -hmm, way, mm -hmm. and then people that were molested or victimized mm -hmm. or had over-domineering mom or forces of, of society. Environmental forces, yeah. Yeah, created this. Yeah. Now, is it more likely for a woman than a man? And We never really uh, explored this, Most of the discussions about the genetics of homosexuality are over men. And women, because they're more fluid, you know, they, they, women less so than men tend to be exclusively homosexual. Right. They can kind of go back and forth. They're more fluid. Now, there are plenty of women that are just lesbian. That, that's the fact. Mm -hmm. But it's not so black and white with women as it is with men. And so most of the discussions about the genetics are in men. Well, okay. So, Woody? Yes, sir. She could have been uh, created in the lab, as we like to say, or God could have made her lesbo. Really? Or some, or we don't or know. Some, or some combo. Or some combo. But... The fact that she told you this, or did she tell you this? Well, she didn't tell me this. I found this out uh, through kind of uh, a roundabout way. See, right. the, the point is, Woody, that women... Where are you going? Women can go through a phase. Men don't go through a phase. Men are yes or no. Yeah. Right. Like, but women well, go I, through I, a phase. And maybe she's not really lesbian. Maybe she just was sort of... Well, well, well let's I not, let's I, not encourage Woody. What I found Woody. out was is that she's... Uh, 
apparently gone through a commitment ceremony with a woman and has been uh, cohabitating with this woman for the past few years. Why was she dating you then? She and wasn't dating I, Woody. Woody just liked her. Oh. Yeah, and the irony is is that this woman, believe it or not, had been contacting me, and that's what really threw me off because there's nothing masculine about her, nothing butch about her. I mean, she's a beautiful Chinese. I had, you know, no way of uh, reading anything other than I just thought... All right, hold on a second. Let me speak to uh, Drew for a second. Okay. Now, when I picture Woody, I picture sort of... Uh, Long flowing locks, ascot, hmm. chiseled chest and chin, yeah, piercing green eyes. N not, yeah, I, I, I think Woody's uh, not uh, not got the old Woody parked in uh, too many garages. Woody, yes, sir. You uh, not not been a big hit with the ladies over the years. Well, I'll tell you, Adam. You know, I, I have to go to Burger King if I want to get my hands on warm buns. It's that kind of a thing. You know? Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing with that sense of humor that you haven't been more successful. Yeah, I think that's very good. Women. But you're a smart guy, right? You work in some sort of a high tech uh, field. Well, Adam, actually, I uh, did stand up comedy for some time, and oh. I'm trying to get back into it. Mm. Yeah, please do. Mm. Always and makes me seem funnier. Let us hear no. some, please. Yeah, we got to hear some jokes, Woody. Uh, I mean, I mean, other than the uh, A list uh, Burger King material, <sighs> I want to. Well, I'll tell you, Adam. This is absolutely true. I sent you an email, and I didn't. I, I didn't think you'd get it because it went to Loveline at Earthlink dot net. But uh, honest to God, yeah, I didn't know we had email. Do well, we have email? It, that's his site. Well, anyway, oh, uh, Adam, well, Lauren answers a, it daily. Okay, oh, she does. Oh, okay, all right. You, you you might get a, a quick kick out of this. Um, honest to God, my real name, my given name is Tom Green, and I was born in Salt Lake City. And of course, the Tom Green Canadian comic already broke through. Sure. Uh, another, another guy, a Canadian, or excuse me, a, a Mormon polygamist with thirty kids, convicted no less, is named Tom Green. Sure. So I, I changed my name, and I swear to you, this is true. I can send you court documents. That's okay. I, cha I changed. Change my it to name. Shecky Green. No, I changed it to Woody Volcano Viagra. Ah, that's good. Whoa! See, if a guy had a sense of humor, he would have laughed when I made my Shecky Green uh, show. Woody Absolutely Volcano. True. Okay. All right. And, and so uh, that's what I'm going by now. And so I'm trying to get back into stand up. But that's uh -huh. the name behind the. What, uh, what got you out of stand up? Well, I, I got kind of high priced out of the. I got priced out of the uh, real estate in California. And uh, so I was taking care of my mother, who was elderly at the time. And I took care of her until she passed away. And I ran low on finances, and I had to return to Salt Lake, and I'm trying to regroup and get back to California. This is very unfunny. All right, all right. That's unfunny. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, so give us a couple of jokes from your act. Well, okay, I can, I can give you a couple of jokes. First of all, you know, uh, as with any drug, a Viagra, the success and the effectiveness of Viagra is dependent upon the proper dose. Mm -hmm. Now, for example, 50 milligrams don't do it for me. I look like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. <laughs> but, but 100 milligrams, Adam. Yeah, and yeah. I, and I'm the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> I wrote that myself. Really? I'll tell you this, yeah. kid's, got, uh, kid's got it. You know, uh, I don't I say that that here. often. Yeah, keep I'll going with it. I'll give you a little Henny Youngman bit, okay? Hey, please, please do. Because uh, right, uh, our 13-year-old our uh, uh, listeners uh, love Henny Youngman. Henny especially. Youngman. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, guy walks into a, a pharmacist, or guy walks into a drugstore, asks the pharmacist if they carry Viagra. Mm -hmm. The pharmacist says, sure. Mm -hmm. And the guy says, can I get it over the counter? The pharmacist says, well, it might take five or six doses. It's a pull joke. Yeah, yeah, I see. I get it. Get it yeah. over the counter. Get it over <laughs> yeah. the counter. You do That's a any hokey, but uh, right? No, no, it's solid. That's a a material. Uh, any uh, any non Viagra jokes? You give, give me one. Non Viagra uh, jokes. <clears throat> well, I do a lot of stuff on when I was growing up. You know, I was such a slow developer, always the last one to come out in a in a Polaroid Shocking. picture. Shocking. Shocking. Uh, <laughs> those, those kind of things. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I grew up in the '60s, and you know, we still played hide and seek, and nobody, none of the other kids came and looked for me. After a few days, they put out an ATB. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you're laughing or if you're no, forced. No, no, I, this is uh, it's good material, Woody. So, you you know, got to get back. You got to get back in. Well, I, 
and you know, I look like a Q-tip with glasses. I mean, you know, so it's, yeah. I don't really have a, a look that the women love. Right, so, uh, right. So right. Uh, that was my uh, right. that was my outlet. Yeah, well, that was good. It was good. Next caller. Good stuff. Good stuff. You got to get in. You make it big. We bring you on the show. You make it too big, you don't want to come on the show. All right, so you make it sort of medium big, you come on the show. Is there any way I could get to the talent coordinator at Jimmy Kimmel's show? Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, there might be a place yeah. for him there. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Armenian comedians are pretty big, pretty big shoes to fill. Uh, I know that. I realize that. Yeah, in other words, you're 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 funny, but you're no genius like the Armenian comedian. I mean, he's been uh, well, touched well, by God. I, I realize that, but I'm I, I haven't prepared all my material. I, I understand. I understand. I understand. We caught you, caught you off guard. Well, I don't uh, I don't know her phone number over there at uh, Jimmy. You just you just uh, dial information. You ask for a uh, talent coordinator. I Jimmy just, Kimmel I, Live. Hollywood. I just uh, hmm. thought of a new reality TV show, mm -hmm. which is. Star Search, you know, or, or American Idol for comedian, American Stand Up, yeah, and all the crappy, you know, yeah, you know. yeah, because I can watch that. I mean, when the Armenian comedian does his ventriloquist act, yeah, or when he plays with his band, it's unbelievable. All right, Woody. But, but imagine, I mean, they, we saw how many bad singers will show up and not realize how awful they are. Imagine with comedy. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because oh. singers, you figure people catch them and go like, hey, really, you, yeah. just, you can't carry a tune. There's nobody to stop the comedian. No way. No way. Yeah, it's got some solid Viagra material there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's go get another call. And, uh, yeah, so, Woody, she's lesbian. Uh, you're not. Find a new chick. Well, women, lo women love a guy with a sense of humor, Drew. Mm -hmm. Don? Yeah. You're 26? Yes. What's up? Well, um, last, uh, on the 14th, this, uh, Valentine's Day, I got engaged. I asked, uh, my girl, my then girlfriend, now fiance, to marry me, and she's 41, and I think she has abandonment issues, and we keep kind of breaking up and getting back together, and, you know, I I just I don't want to go through that again and uh, then don't sure. uh, get on with it. Go some find somebody else. Well, she I mean if she's forty two, never been married, and she hasn't gotten over or hasn't you know been able to control her impulses as far as her issues, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough for you. You know what I'm saying there, Don? Yeah. What did has she been married before? Yeah, she was married. She got divorced like a year before we met. And has she had some trouble in the past? Well, that's where I think it comes from. Her, you know, her ex-husband cheated on her, and her, uh, and her, and her father pretty much left her at a young age. Yeah. All right. Well, now it's all in her. It's not all the outside doing things to her. This is yeah. about her now. Yeah. So, Don, she have kids. Uh, yeah, three. Oh. And they're great kids. I love them. All right. Well, Whoa. just uh, know that uh, she's got some serious issues floating around. Is she getting into any therapy or anything? Uh, no. You know any Viagra jokes? You are 15 years her junior. 15 yes, I am. years. And so you don't want oh, to have any she's, kids. She's 42. He's 26. 41. Four, no, 40. God, I should get that right. Otherwise, she's going to right. kill me. Uh, 14 well, years. Well, listen. Know. Listen, Don. Yeah. Uh... Don's got some stuff going on. Yeah, what's going on with you, Don? Um, well, I'm just working, trying to get my finances back, uh, get them together, and going to school, and uh -huh. really trying to get to be a place where I'm successful. Right. She got a house and a car and stuff? Well, uh, she's got a house that she leases uh, from her ex-husband so that she can have a, uh, a stable place for her family. Uh-huh. Is she okay? Does she work? She works. We we both work. Don't you know? Don't do drugs. Don't All right. drink too much. All right. Uh, All right. All right. Well, look, Don. Boring. Uh, don't don't uh, don't rush to the actual marriage part. Yeah. You, you asked her to marry you. You got engaged. That's fine. But keep in mind that uh, she's going to need to do a little work on herself. Oh boy. Why? What's the problem? Three kids. Twenty-six-year-old stepdad. Yeah, who? Oh. who? <laughs> oh. uh, well, what do you want? I got a stepdad who's, uh, my stepdad is like 15 years younger than my mom. Really? I think so. 
I mean, I try not to talk to anybody, so I don't know. But yeah, my step, my my mom is like sixty nine, seventy. He's like fifty five. Yeah, yeah. He's he's uh, he's quite a bit younger than my mom. I mean, mm-hmm. they got together uh, twenty five years ago or whatever it was. Uh, oh Christ, he he could have been uh, thirty five. No, he could have been thirty. Mm. And uh, she could have been fifty or no, not 45. fifty, like forty-five, what? something like that. All right. Whatever. <laughs> it's all still something in the thirties. I was. All right. uh, we got to take a break. I was talking. Uh, you know, I like to laugh about uh, how cheap your dad is and uh, what uh, yeah. screw ups my parents are and right. all that kind of stuff. Uh, and listen, I've said it many times. People are like, "Well, what are you, what are you, what are you bagging on your parents for?" And you're on the radio. Hey, kiss my ass, you screw balls. Yeah, it's time to pay the fiddler. I got no problem with this. Bad parents? You, yeah, you roll the dice. You don't think the kid's going to make it on the radio? Well, he's got a mic now. <laughs> what do you guys care? You're asleep. You don't have any friends. No one talks to them about anything. I'd say whatever I want about anybody in my family. No one ever talks to them. Uh-oh. But so here's the good news. Uh, but uh, my dad, I remember, I don't know, I, I had to start, um, you know, he used to um, get uh, records from the library. You know, yeah. and and they would melt in the car. I would oh. always forget and leave them in the car, and oh, they would no. get all warped. But the, I was I was sort of fixated on the warping of the records. Yeah. But then I, I started thinking to myself, you know, he was well into his forties when he was going over to the library to get the records. You you want to know? Oh. You want to think think loser? And Drew, you talk about your dad's cheap, but think think real cheap. Think yeah. uh, going loser to the library oh. and checking out records. Mm. And does that go on? I mean, wouldn't you think it only happens to disabled? Like that, that's, wouldn't that be a special program for, for the mentally challenged or the physically handicapped that you would rent? It'd be, it'd be like a school get trip records. Yes, records the from, the, from the library. Yeah. All right, there's a, those are the Corollas. Hello, this is your radio. Radio Love Line will be right back. This is Love Line on 94.7 NRK. Hey, everybody, love line. Blah, 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 blah. All right, let's get some calls in here, Drew. What do you say now? Fair enough. Let's talk to uh, Sean, who's 25. Sean? Hey, how you doing? Hey there, buddy boy. Um, here's my situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, about a year ago, I had started dating this most beautiful Latina girl. Mm-hmm. And about a month into the relationship, we started having sex. Mm-hmm. Um, now... About a month after that, we started having sex a lot, talking Mm. three, four, five times a week. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started noticing that I was breaking out. Mm You must be allergic to her. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope not. Um, In my high school years, never really had a problem, you know, with acne, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, I spent about six years in the service, so... As far as my sexual activity, you know, it was a non-existent. Event. Right. Right. All right. So are you asking where this acne is connected with the sexual activity? Well, I kind of want to say that I know it is, mm-hmm. but I'm... How, I'm how? Because I started catching on to it at the, in the summer, this summer. And I got to the point where I wanted to, like, not have any sex for... Like, I put it as weeks. There was one point where I didn't have any sex for two weeks, and I didn't, and I wasn't breaking out at all. So I, you know, I made the connection that they were connected, because then I started having sex again, like slowly, I'd, you know, we'd have, you know, we'd mess around and have sex once a week, and then it just got, and then it just started well, happening. Right, right. I, I don't want to take issue with a little case study of none, of one rather, but I don't know of any association or how it could be connected physiologically, it just doesn't. Fit. What if you decided uh, that it was? I mean, so much of acne is sort of uh, a lot of it is sort of stress and yeah, some of it's, I mean, and it's, it's just it's a bacteria and it's, it's, also, I mean, it's it seems hormones. Like, it seems it is like hormones. Kind of, I mean, maybe it's testosterone. Well, that's what I figured hormones. Yeah, maybe you know, maybe he's one of these guys whose testosterone levels really respond to sexual activity, or maybe he was so deprived before those levels were falling off. All right, so, so something to that. Maybe. All right, so what should he do, Drew? 
uh, get some uh, Retin-A and uh, try benzoyl peroxide maybe to start with and treat the acne. Yeah. Go see a dermatologist. Don't. Hey, you know, I'll tell you, Sean, I'll tell you, it, the, almost nothing works uh, that you can go buy at the drugstore for anything mm-hmm. uh, without a prescription. Like all that uh, crap, that that uh, cortisone cream with point zero 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 percent of nothing, all that crap. Yeah. But uh, I'll tell you what does work. Two things that work. Uh, NyQuil works and uh, Oxy-10. <laughs> Well, you get that ten percent benzoyl peroxide, and you spread it on every night. But if I don't, I'm you know I only have one girl, and if I don't have sex yeah, for yeah. two weeks, then it's good. It's fine. Yeah, Sean, would you go, shut go up and listen acne. to what we're telling get, you, you get, idiot? Get your acne treated. All we right? understand. We believe your story about the zits. So go get some treatment. All right. All yeah. right, buddy. Good start. So look at listen to me. Yeah. Don't squeeze on them. <laughs> don't. don't don't squeeze on them. Don't monkey with them. Just dab on some of that Oxy-10 before you go to bed, all right? All right. And then you can stick a pin in it later on. That That's my move. Work, then the, benzo- the uh, Retin-A type creams are good. And or antibiotics. Now, what's the Retin-A type cream? Are they really s- s- stronger than yeah. the benzoyl peroxide? Yeah, it's different. Different mechanism. It changes the way the, basically, the follicle functions. Different. So you, you dab on some of that... Uh, Dab on some of that Oxy-10 on that zit. It really does a number on it. Good and, times. and don't monkey with it. Right. Don't monkey. Jackie? Oh, yeah? You're, uh... Oh, hey. Yeah, you're 19. What's up? Um, well, me and my boyfriend have just moved home from college about six months ago from last year. And we've been having some issues. I am seem to be a little bit more sexually energized than he is, so to speak. Uh-huh. And he's 21, and we've tried to come up with solutions because we both live at home right now trying to save money. Mm-hmm. And he just doesn't want to do it as much. And I'm just, I'm really tried the whole thing. What, what does he want to do? What does he want to do? Oh, what don't, do Jackie, first of all, stop thinking like a woman. You're, you're, this idea that we're going to have a special place to do it will entice him? No, no, no. No, that's not how guys function. Oh, I don't care. I do it in his car, wherever. He just doesn't even, like, say anything or think of it or anything. He, like, never wants to do it anymore. I'm always, like, initializing. How, how often do you want to do it? All the time. Anytime I see him. I don't care. And how often does he want to do it? He never mentions it. Mm-hmm. Well, if he had his druthers, how would it, how often would it be? What's his rhythm? Well, she doesn't know because he never, well, never gets down to it. When we were in level. college, we would do it, like, eight times a day. Right. Yeah. And it, now it's, like... It's down to, like, six. No, it's, like, nothing. Like, twice a week. Twice uh-huh. a week. Uh-huh. Twice a week, you know, is a normal rhythm. How long have you two been together? For about a year, almost and a half, like 16 months. Yeah, that may That's be about, his... about time the guy, uh, the snow globe settles yeah. with the jizz blowing around right. and settles into into the town. Yeah. Yeah. The jizz settles on the roofs and all. <laughs> it's quaint. So are you saying it's normal or not? It's, that's a normal rhythm for an average male. Oh, and yeah. I asked him if he was gay. I got really scared. No, t- well, what, what, average couple is not even twice a week. Well, also, you're, well, it's a little more, usually about 19 and 21, whatever. Yeah. But when you're when you're riding on the guy a little bit too and ask him if he's gay, it can it can stymie him a little yeah, bit. Guys get a little flipped out when a woman is too aggressive and to initiate too much too often. They just shut down. Let me explain. Plus what, he's, he's run dry. I mean she's just, you know, worn out. Well, you know, I'll tell you how guys respond to uh women, you know, wanting to know what's up, why aren't you horny? Are you gay? Why don't you like me? They respond the same way women respond when you honk the horn behind them. Yeah. When they're not turning a goddamn car they right when they should be turning right, they're like, huh, what? They get frazzled. They mm-hmm. look in their mirror. They don't do what you want them to do. You think it's going to work? It backfires on you. It's same with the guys with the, what's wrong with you? You're not into me. Are you gay? They, they end up close. They shut down. And then her answer is, well, we'll get a hotel room. Have a romantic. No. Well. That, no, but the guy doesn't respond to that. Well, no. She was just saying she needed a place because they're both living at home, but. Guy doesn't need, guy doesn't need to find a place when no, he's horny. No. Okay. So what does she need to do? Well, we need to find out if she's a sex addict or anything going on there. If she can calm it down a little bit. I don't think so. Jackie. Uh huh. Are, are you sexually compulsive? Can you control your sexual? Oh yeah, I can control me. All right. Uh, so here's what you need to do. Give the guy off. give the guy a little room. Yeah. Just give him some room. T- take a week off. Realize that his twice a week is probably his normal rhythm. It has nothing to do with how he feels about hey, you. That's just his see, biology. See the guy and don't bring it up a couple, three times in a row. Let okay. him initiate it. I've been talking to some people about it, so we've gotten to the point where, you know, let's get over it. But what do I do for myself? Like, toy-wise, you know. 
You, can you go five days without being stimulated? Mm, that I'd say about. Okay, use your hand then. Or go get a vibrator. You think that would solve the problem and it wouldn't cause issues in the, in the relationship? I, I Why would know. it cause issues? It would relieve things. Just take care of yourself. Yeah. Wow, Jackie's like... Oh, oh yeah, he's like manic. Yeah, Jackie's... Uh, you know you know what? And this is what guys do, by the way, too, is Jackie's a little high strung and guys shut down. Yeah. They just uh, they become like turtles. They just pull their head and <laughs> the penis balls. Penis goes up inside of them. The ball sack oh, raises boy. like landing gear, and they just want to hide. Yeah, that's it. All right, let's uh, talk to uh, Steve, who's uh, 18. Steve? Yeah. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, uh, I got this kind of fetish. I was wondering if it would... Uh, All right, back. what is it? Uh, <clears throat> like the sight of a girl who has to pay. Has, has, has to pay? Has, has to pay? pay? Oh, okay. Is, has to pee or is yeah. peeing? No, ha has to. Her a woman holding her urine turns you on? Yeah, the body language of it. I don't know why. It's it's always been like that for like as long as I can remember. Interesting. Wow. Sort of the knees turned in and ankles yeah. out. Yeah. Mm hmm And the hands hands over the Yeah, the uh, the whole thing. So sort of like like uh what? Marilyn Monroe's pose as when she was getting her skirt blown up by the subway. Uh, yeah, kind of like that. Yeah. Uh, my question was like, yeah. uh, if like, liking that would like affect a sexual relationship in any way. Mm. Or if I could still just have like a normal sexual well, relationship. Well, what do you, what, like now what would you do? How would you incorporate that into your relationship? Like, uh, uh, hey, honey, drink the six pack of Mickey's. <laughs> We're going on a road trip. And all you got to do, by the way, doors. no, 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 no. Here's all you got to do. You're, you're calling from Pennsylvania? Yeah. You just come out to L.A. You, you have a couple of beers. You just drive around uh, the Hollywood area. And no gas station will ever let you use their goddamn bathroom because they're all pricks. And so you just do that. And she'll have that look on her face the entire time you're driving around because there's no place to pee because no one will let you use anything. You going That's to college, my dude? plan. Uh, no, not, not right now. Are you going to go? I'm thinking about it. I want to be a bartender. Oh, oh, you got to go to college for that. Of course. Sure. That's, uh, what is it, four years? You got well, you get your bachelor's, and then I, what? I think you're pouring all those drinks for all those women. They're all going to have to pee. Yeah. They're all going to get up and go to the bathroom regularly. Oh, and so you, you'd, you'd major in, like, uh, in like uh, proof content and then minor in, like, pearl onions or something. Like, what? how much training does the bartending? You know, you know, here's how you become a bartender. You become, you start bartending. <laughs> all right, Steve. Yeah. I'm all right. This is this is okay. You're fine. And 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 let's you start freaking chicks out. But you don't want to see them pee. I I, I, you know, I don't know. It's kind of like a bonus if like sure if they you know don't make it. Oh. But so if they lose their urine, yeah. So right. interesting. I wonder what yeah. that is. All right. You like like you see you go on this websites and stuff. You see the women peeing. Do you like that? Yeah. It's like there's all different kinds. Like there's there's a few that I know of. They're free, and they specifically like they specify in just the the whole holding situation. Oh, there there's websites with just the holding it. Yeah. But what if you think it's staged? Like they're faking it. Uh, I I can almost tell. Like it's just weird. But like I don't. I don't know. Really. And 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 human beings are so interesting. Yeah, screwed up. I think is what you mean. Would you rather have a really beautiful woman who didn't have to pee, or a semi-attractive woman who really had to pee? Uh, I'd go with the beautiful woman. Oh, okay. So you're not that into this. You're no, no dummy. This is like a like a, th a thing on the side. Yeah. Okay. It's a little sideline. No, you're no dummy. Anderson, you don't think that was interesting? Uh, I've, much, never, I've never heard of that. Then he like, at the end, he's like, well, it's just a little thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, look, no, look, this guy. It always does something for him, but that's yeah, weird but and interesting. He, he's not that much into it. Yeah, his but it's, it, I've never heard of that before. Okay. That's interesting. All right. Drew, if you just keep saying the show's interesting, maybe people think it's interesting. It's, a good it's so interesting. It's fascinating. Fascinating. It's riveting, is what it is. Provocative, yes. Yes? Yes. Hello? Love Call one eight hundred oh, one nine one. Adam and Doctor Drew will now be right this back. This is wonderful. Love Line on ninety four seven NRK. We'll be right back in a minute. Well, 
welcome. Love Line with Dr. Drew and Adam Corolla on 94.7 NRK. It's the love line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. You need to have it out with your grandmother. <clears throat> She's a good woman. Drew. I know what she is, but about? you have to have it out. Like, what? What is that? Yeah. What, what's the What's the message? I was telling Drew my grandmother did this one to me the other day. I talked to her yesterday, and she goes, "I saw you the other week on uh, Jimmy's show." It's a long <laughs> beat, and I said, "Uh huh," and she took a beat, and she said. Uh huh, <laughs> and it was like we're at a little stalemate. Like, oh, you, usually I'm a little confused because there's like a little compliment that usually comes in at or the something. end of this or something. But why draw attention to it too? That's what I was like. Like a, there's something. Just, just she, say you she, didn't there, do there's it. Some message that she's dying to give you. Something in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever the hell it is, you got to find out. Well, Have it out. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Does your Nin- mother know the kind of work that you do? She's 90 years old. I'll leave her alone. All right. All right. Well, she's evoking you. Though. She's prov- provoking you. Yeah, well, she just wants me to, she wants to let, let me know that she's in charge and that you know, she doesn't want me to get, uh, she want to get, you know, she want me to get a fat head. Yeah. You know, just keep me grounded. Yeah. I, I got to keep it real. Family's uh, very preoccupied with that. Liz, ironically. <laughs> It's ironic that my grandma's been in charge of keeping me grounded. <laughs> Liz? Is yeah. it, Liz? What's up there, baby? You're 29. Liz? What was that? Somebody showed me a GQ uh, article today in which I'd made the, uh, officially made the uh, C list of celebrities. <laughs> <laughs> that a long list of uh, celebrities are now officially in the C <laughs> group. Guys like Dolph Lundgren. Oh, and, uh, and myself, uh, yeah, thank you. And I thought, well, yeah, I mean, Jimmy's gone on to do something, but um, the new the new uh, season of uh, The Man Show aired yesterday. And we, got, yeah. Yeah, we got a whole new, yeah. there's a whole season left of The Man Show, and yeah. uh, the new uh, Crank season Yankers. of Crank Yankers is starting up in a, in a week, and uh, I'm still doing this show. I'm I'm not doing anything less, I mean, as far as they know, mm-hmm. than what I was doing before. Am oh, you, I? You, you went down to sea? I think that was the implication. I don't I don't think the idea was I was always at sea. I think I. No, the, they're, the implication they're, was is these people have slid to sea. They're taking a shot at the Jimmy going on thing. Yeah. That's, well, I, I mean, how do you... Uh, they're entitled to their opinion. Yeah. I don't want to seem like I have a thin skin, but... If I was doing the man show, Crank Yankers and Loveline, the syndicated radio show before, yeah. and I'm still doing uh, the man show, Crank Yankers and Loveline, the syndicated radio show, how am I in the, how did I get into the C category? Yeah. Crank Yanker. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Al? Well, you say Adam. Hey, you're 29. What's up? Hey, how's it going? How's it going, Dr. Drew? Hey, Al. Good. Yeah, my little situation is uh, a friend of mine, he went to jail about nine months ago. What for? Um, they calling it manslaughter. He got in a fight at a bar, and the guy he was fighting wound up dying. Ooh. Mm. So, um, they put just sort of, just sort of the next day just died, and they blamed him. We got hit by a piece of the space shuttle. Yeah, and, uh, yeah they blamed this guy. It was within 24 <laughs> hours, so there's certain laws. So, um, anyway, his girlfriend, well, he left her back home, whatever, whatever. Um, How long is he going to be done, gone for? Um, I think they gave him about 15. Ooh. How long do you think he'll do, do you know? Um, I'm not sure all the details on that. All right. Well, I'm sure this guy will, will get time off for good behavior. So uh, now he's left his girly behind, and you're interested in her? Well, not only interested, but um, we were together Friday night and all day Saturday. Mm-hmm. Damn, bitch. Oh. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, so I'm all right with this, by the way. Yeah, I, I mean, really what are you going to do? Yeah. But but here's the question. I, I got a couple of questions. Mm-hmm. Um I worry about her because she was with this guy right. who's, who's, who's a murderer. Seems kind of violent. No, I mean, he's a pretty decent guy, to be honest, but when he get a little alcohol and then when he was at the bar that night, okay. some people called him out his name and Circum- they got into a little fiasco. Circumstantial, you know. but uh, 
He must have had a little, well, maybe he just didn't have good representation, but uh, he didn't have the dream team on his side. But he must have had some priors and stuff like that, right? Mm, probably a few things. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Al, you're a good friend. No, that's that's what Adam's talking about. Why, okay, why but she, what's she? What's her story? That's, I well, guess, my her, question. Her thing is, and she wants to write him and tell him that you know, uh, she done hooked up with somebody. Oh. And she wants to tell him, you know, yeah. like, it's me. And I'm kind of like, no, I don't do. Oh, that. this this is what we're talking no, about with yeah. this woman. She's yeah. she's into drama, manslaughter the first time around, and uh, murder one second time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering what's up with her and not what she wants to do. Here's what I'm saying, Al. Uh, I know women, and and I know a woman who's attracted to a guy like your friend who's maybe a little bit violent or has trouble with alcohol or has had some run-ins with the law, that she's got some issues. She's got some issues. And those issues, you don't see those issues right now because you're in the honeymoon phase. Things are new. Things are fun. Things are fresh. Right. But I'm worried about you and her down the road. Yeah. And, 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 and his safety with this other and, guy. And, well, this guy's going to be behind bars for uh, quite some time. Does she work? Does she have kids? What does she uh, do? No, no kids, but she works. All right. How old is she? She's 27. 27, no kids, and she's got a job. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, I, give the, I give the relationship my blessing. Uh, I think that uh, if he's expecting her to visit him every weekend... She better tell him sooner than later, but I don't think she needs to say you. She definitely did, and she shouldn't say anybody. She should just say, you know, I need to go out my life. That's right. right. That's it. She so said, she and but look, she is prone to drama, and yeah. so, so she the, does yeah. my thing. She know, you know, I ain't trying to have a relationship. We just, you know, enjoying each other's company. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, yeah. listen, don't get her pregnant. Oh, ha definitely not. Ha have your kicks, and have her say, look. You're going to be in here for 15 years. I'm a young woman. You know, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be having hot flashes by the time you get out of here. I got to move on with life, and that's fine. Yeah. Don't bring you up. You don't bring you up. Nobody brings you up. Go to a break now, yeah. Jen. Yeah. 16. Yeah. Wants to know what our opinion is on how to stop constant arguing with your boyfriend. Yeah. Get a new boyfriend. Eh. Well, are you are you an arguer? Um, it depends on the situation, I guess. Yeah, well, who, which one of you is sort of the, the, the drama queen, and which one of you is into the chaos, or is it both of you? Um, I guess it's kind of both of us. All right, well, then you guys are just going to dance for a while. But, like, we've been together for five months, and we've been fine for a while, but just recently, these past couple weeks, like, we've been just not, like... Yeah, what are you fighting about? Like, it's almost like he doesn't take me seriously. Yeah, probably right. does. Maybe just, it does. Yeah. We just argue over like dumb stuff. Well, maybe right, you well, sense him pulling away, and this is your way to sort of re-engage him. I don't know. Well, can you sort of stand outside yourself and look at yourself a little bit when you're getting into these things, and see if you can catch yourself before you and, spin and really out? Really rethink this relationship. Maybe this isn't what you think it is. If you're going at it after five months. All right, Drew, Drew sneezing. No, sorry. Well, uh, and you're pressing the cough button. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got to cough. <clears throat> there you go. All right, guys. Bottom line, here's the deal. Looking to hook up? Sick of wasting time with the wrong person? One call's all you need to make. Call the date line. The date line. 877-889-DATE. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. 1-800-LOVE-191. Wow, wow, wow. You know you say wow, wow. You know you can. We'll be right back. Love line on 94.7 NRK is brought to you by Car Toys. Loveline on ANRK, Camas, Portland. Loveline, ANRK. Yep, that's the show. Tomorrow night, more of the same. Yeah. Yeah. Good. What a relief. Whew. Maybe I'll bring in that uh, GQ list. Find okay. out who else made the C I'd celebrity. To see that. Drew, you're not even on there. Oh, I've never made it. I don't know if that's good or bad. Uh, yeah, it's good and bad. It's yeah, both. It's, both. it's both. It's both. Yeah, yeah, mostly bad. Yeah. Mostly. So until next time, this is Adam Crawler for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Human beings are so interesting. This has been Loveline. 
The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins-Dingle. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.